Hello, everyone. Morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Thank you for joining the Capricorn Solar Festival webinar of the 2025 initiative. My name is Alexander, and I welcome you on behalf of uh, our coordination group of the 2025 initiative. Today is the last of five days of the solar festival of the, uh, in Capricorn. And it's the second session of our follow-up reflection on the festival week of the group impact. We come together to share our impressions and to hear each other, bringing together different pieces of the big mosaic of the world group impressions. None of us has uh, ultimate vision of the unfolding plan, but each of us, each group receives own piece of this beautiful mosaic. And as we share, we weave together through the resonance, this beautiful tapestry of the vision of the work that unfolds ahead of us in the next seven years. Today, we will start our work together with a silent meditation, with the sound of the bell, we will go into the silence where we will focus together as one group linking heart to heart, mind to mind, creating the group field and through the group centers connecting with the heart of the hierarchy, the Christ. And after the 12 minutes, there will be another sound of the bell, which will open our sharing. As more people join in now, our circle, for the sake of the logistics of the efficient flow of sharing, we invited several people to join our inner circle to open our sharing. Today in this inner circle, we have Dot Maver from the United States, Rebecca and Richard Hood from Australia, Martin Deezer, from Argentina, Elizabeth, Elisabetta Raspini from Italy, Stefano Bonadiman from Italy, Tara Stewart from the United States, and Christine Thomas from Australia. As we will start the sharing, I invite the inner circle to step in with the sharing, unmuting themselves, and um, bring forward what the most important impression from the festival week or experience, the most important experience of the festival week. It's naturally that we still in the process of 
realization and precipitation of impressions. So anything that is resonant at the moment to share, please bring it forward. And then at some point we will open the sharing for uh, people in the outer circle. And this geometry of inner and outer circle is just a formal way to organize our process. So please don't feel discriminated of, uh, about this uh, distinction. Uh, we're all together in one circle. And then we will end our work today with a, another moment of silence and sounding of the Great Invocation. So let's begin. After the sound of the bell, we have 12 minutes of silent focused meditation.
invite our panelists in the inner circle to share. Richard here from uh, Sunshine Coast Australia. Um, I'd like to share just to start off with um, experience that I had here over that festival week. Um, the group that I belong to, uh, we met every day for several hours and um, at the beginning of of each meeting and often somewhere during and certainly as we closed we very consciously um, brought in and reached out to the greater group that was working and we all found that to be extremely powerful and reinforcing of um, our experiences that were happening through that week which were incredibly rich which I'm sure we'll talk more about as we go through. Um, but that sense of interaction and action that was happening on the subjective levels was incredibly tangible. Um, and to the build up of that week, which really for us, we could, it was very uh, strong really from that full moon that led down into um, that point of the new moon and across to the uh, festival. Of course, one's fatigue levels, physical fatigue levels and mental and emotional fatigue levels increase. And it was like there was this reservoir of energy that was available um, for anyone that gave themselves to it. Uh, and a lovely image that came to my mind um, actually just recently was as one, as as we down here in Australia were becoming active throughout the day, the other groups in the Northern Hemisphere were going into their subjectively into the sleep worlds and everything. It was like around the globe there was this this glow that was coming and going as as groups were coming into the activities and then receding back into the night world for them. Uh, and it just had this living organism feeling to me and uh, just this this pulsing. Um, and the other thing I really appreciate uh, is the sense of diversity, that there are these multiple groups that have particular focus points, I suppose, different things that they're involved in, um, and we're all a little bit different yet the same and the image that comes to me with that is like a multifaceted gem or a crystal that has different faces to the same crystal that comes to the same point and um, I think that's a, a very beautiful thing and that's something that um, certainly I'll be carrying into the 2020s with me. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Just a technical note, Stefano, I cannot uh, uh, make you a panelist, but you are unmuted uh, on our end. So whenever you want ready to share, please unmute yourself. Thank you. So this is Dot calling in from New Hampshire in the USA. And very aware that we are in this moment standing this tremendous powerhouse of influence of the Pluto Saturn in Capricorn conjunction. So it's deeply moving and heartening that we choose as a group to serve together intentionally at this pivotal and critical moment for humanity and the planet. And as we are now entering this seven-year cycle, we do so with our hearts united across distance and in concert 
as the journey continues. And it's been deeply moving and still is to share the living experience of the culmination of this 84 year cycle of service as we are now realizing the living unified field of our service. It's a joy. So there are three distinct impressions to share from Festival Week. One, we have anchored a, a unified field of service that has indeed been building for 84 years, and it is now our lived and living experience as a group. And we've done this both horizontally and vertically, as a portal is now open that will not be shut. Two, there's an awareness of humanity truly recognizing and more than that, in fact, realizing its interconnectedness and interdependence like never before. We are one, and this is our new operating system within which we live and move and have our being. Perhaps Australia is the demonstration model par excellence as it is real time during festival week and certainly during the opening week of 2020, a powerful expression of pain and suffering, of goodwill, of unity, and a deepened awareness and livingness of one human family is being experienced. We're here for one another. And three, the world group of servers living reality seems now fully in the etheric. In fact, finding myself conscious of us as a group serving in and from various points on the planet and the other side of the veil, operating constantly, consistently, consciously in a unified field of intentional service as we enter this next seven year cycle. One of my favorite leadership quotes is from Kathleen Kelly. Living systems only accept solutions. The system helps to create. Humanity is realizing we are a living system and we live in a living system. And we are networking the networks, becoming a system of influence on behalf of the common good. And this is heartening indeed. Om Shanti. Thank you, Todd. Indeed. And if I may, this is Martin from Argentina. And uh, of course, I totally share what uh, what has been said, and uh, particularly about the reservoir of energy and the potential of our unified field as humanity. And uh, one of the things I, I noticed, and we talked this with some other people in, in, in my field, in my own circle, is uh, the importance of silence uh, during these last uh, seven years and in the organization of our work uh, in, well, these this last weeks. And uh, I wonder up to what point our contribution as esoteric groups has to do with uh, this empowerment of silence. This, uh, understanding of silence as uh, perhaps part of the peace energy that is coming uh, due to the influx of the fourth ray and the, or the, the incoming energy that has been full around on the planet. And also at the same time, uh, the placement of peace and silence at the center of human consciousness and not, not, not to lose uh, our attention in outer effects in terms of war, in terms of uh, whatever conflict is going on, and trying to, uh, you know, to embody uh, a state of pure silence and peace and, and act and radiate this as a contribution, because it's going to be very necessary, it seems, in terms of, you know, in a world that is uh, facing climate change and it's facing perhaps uh, 
uh, at least local wars, uh, economic turmoil. And the other thing that uh, we discussed also some other time that I, in my view is coming also clear is uh, the need for greater coordination um, in the subject in our objective dimensions. How we face and how we empower these dimensions, how we open ourselves to, to be more concrete and to, to feed, uh, you know, uh, groups that are in the outer circle and how we actually learn and uh, take vitality and energy from them. So I think it's uh, overall it's one process and it's up to us how we walk and how we can keep clear this energy and this path ahead for the seven years ahead. Thank you. Uh, this is Elisabetta from Italy. Uh, I would like to share this uh, deep sense of still being in this uh, invocative and evocative planetary breath that we have engaged together, especially since the beginning of the festival. It's like we are really in breathing and out breathing in this invocation and evocation within the body of humanity. And um, as we all said, you know, it's not a moment of synthesis, but it's just the beginning of a new cycle where I feel that there is uh, this important opportunity to gather inwardly and outwardly being uh, open to impression as much as we can and being pressed and in press and to hold uh, that reservoir of energy that we can all feel that is present there so I see this also as a task for all of us. And, uh, and from that reservoir of energy, let the energy circulate within the body of humanity. What uh, appeared to me very um, urgent in a way, and uh, with deep appreciation for the inspiration received, you know, from few years ago from the group who was inspired by it is the need to really focus on the 17 sustainable development goals because this really pertains to all humanity so within the group of new world servers to hold the focus and becoming impressed and impressed from our side and then direct from that reservoir of energy that we can hold together, you know, the energy to circulate within the body of humanity. I had also a very strong uh, image, you know, during these days, which was one of a, a lighted cross, white, bright cross with these two arms, horizontal and vertical with this, the, the feeling that we should more and more be the alignment and stand on that cross as individuals and as a group and as a planetary server. And at the same time, I had this image of an overlapping chalice, one side of the chalice up and the other side of the chalice down receiving and, in, and radiating out. And at the end, when I draw it, it really looked like a huge angelic presence over lighting. And also the image of this rosebud in the center of our heart that can be that point where this fragrance can emanate within the body of humanity. 
And um, one mantra that I sounded uh, many, many times during this uh, moment, period time was the, the mantra of peace. And I would like to offer it to us. May the holy ones whose pupils we aspire to become show us the light we seek. Give us the strong aid of their compassion and their wisdom. There is a peace that passes all understandings. It abides in the heart of those who live in the eternal. There is a power that maketh all things new. It lives and moves in those who know the self as the one. May that peace broad over us, that power uplift us till we stand where the one initiator is invoked, till we see his star shine forth. May the peace and blessing of the Holy Ones pour forth over the world. Peace, peace. Peace. Thank you. <coughs> Tara Stewart uh, here in New Hampshire. I would like to share two things, two impressions that continually come to me as I join the group in its oneness of commitment in the unfoldment of these seven years and beyond that. Symbolically, a particular image is of a great symphony orchestra and a great choir of voices led and directed, but in a wondrous symphony of sound and at the conclusion, there is, among all who heard and all who performed, those moments of inclusive silence. And that image keeps coming to me because it seems to me that we stand as within that silence of the gift of the sound that moves an audience and the performers to stillness and it radiates. I have just returned from the Silk Road in far Southeast Asia and I realize the power of silence in different ways maybe because I've been confronted by all of what is taught as the barriers to communication. And it seems to me that silence communicates. I keep finding it, no language barrier, but everybody thinks there is. And I, and with whomever I am out in the, small areas or on the mountains or the rice paddies, there's silence and yet we communicate sometimes with sound as well, our own languages and understanding. Two, silence brings an acceptance and if you will, an experience of joy. And again, one more. This silence of which we are all a part and as others join us in this silence that circulates and moves in a spiral upward and also outward. This is the joyful magnetic quality of silence. And if we're silent enough, we well may hear 
the music of the universe. We don't go in any particular order through the sharing. So if anyone in the inner circle you will resonate with what been shared, you can step in again and uh, just weave this, create this magical tapestry of group impressions together, following the flow. Hi, it's Chris here from Australia. Just following on um, from what Tara's shared, I, I guess for me over this last um, period of time, so during the festival weekend since, I, I feel like the festival week has continued. The energies have been um, incredibly uh, strong and um, yeah, the, the subtle energies are just um, very, very, very present and um, finding lots of opportunity to witness um, the presence of those energies in everyday life. And um, I suppose when I um, reflect on um, the power that's come from this uh, phase of working. I, I, I've been reflecting on some of the work that we've been doing in our group around the group fires and really thinking about um, this uh, relationship to our own individual psychosynthesis and then the correlation to group synthesis and um, how that then leads us to this place of um, unity consciousness with, you know, the whole of humanity and, um, you know, uh, hierarchy. And so um, I've been really kind of contemplating that a lot and thinking about um, this place of silence <laughs> with the... Um, silent minute we've been doing a lot of work with that and so for me I I've really felt you know when we are able to enter into that place of silence and stillness um, for Aboriginal people in Australia we often refer to that as Dardiri um, we are opening ourselves up and offering ourselves um, to the great ones who are seeking to aid humanity and the um, thing I've really felt most powerful around the silent minute has been the realization of this um, spiritual practice 
that is accessible to the masses. It doesn't belong to any race, religion or creed. It, it's a, um, uh, a practice that anyone, um, anywhere can find their own relationship to it. And the power that sits in its simplicity as a practice is, is just astounding and it's been astounding to watch it roll um, the way that it has. And, um, you know, for me it, it's just been really um, profound in, in its simplicity and power and I've um, been thinking a lot about um how in that silence and in that stillness we have this opportunity to witness life uh in in all its manifestations and so as we look around globally all of the things that are happening that create turmoil and uh, conflict and confusion and suffering for people that when we are able to be still and witness these experiences of life, we're able to presence ourselves and others. Um, and so, you know, I've heard over this last little while a few folks of saying, how do we take this to the masses? How do we do more? And um, one of the uh, slogans or slokers of the uh, silent minute has been silence as action and I feel that there's a really powerful um, uh, point um, of contemplation in that because as you know servants of the light when we're able to still ourselves enough to be present with others in all of those manifestations of light life then we are inviting in the light and the love that works through us and touches the hearts of those in front of us. And so it doesn't matter where we are or who we're with. Um, when we're in this place, we don't need to be concerned about the right words or the right symbols um, or knowing what to say or do because um, that silence opens up a portal, um, you know, a portal of the heart where we get to witness um, the soul behind the form and we create um, and hold the space for individuals, groups and communities to reach for higher ground, whatever that is for them. Um, and I think that's where the power of that, um, comes into its own you know that is silence in action as we commune with others uh, we enter into that place of unconditional love because we're able to witness the manifest manifestation of life um, in all its forms and we shift from doing to being radiant points of light and uh, i just think there's such incredible power in that yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. It's Rebecca here, another voice from Australia. <laughs> um, I've got three main impressions. Um, the first one is of the way the, these, this group has formed and the work has been done. And it's happened very organically through, an in, through in shared intention, but through um, very um <clears throat> without a structured plan to begin with um and the structure has formed organically out of the meeting 
of of everyone <clears throat> and I feel like this is a, a beautiful template for how groups can begin to learn to work um, and maybe it's a template that will be multiplied um, within the esoteric community to start off with um, possibly the sense of groups beyond this group um, so within other faiths or other disciplines of um, working in the esoteric perhaps there's a potential for this um, geometry or this um, way of geometrizing that's that um, seems to have been this process that's happened leading up to festival week to to extend further in a very natural and organic way um, the second thing is really um, just I guess another angle on some of the things that Elisabetta said so beautifully um, in terms of wondering what the function what what we what we need to do <laughs> um, and what our, what the role is of this group and as Alexander said we we don't know what the plan is we feel for it and um, together with different functions of different groups um, we, we hold different pieces of the mosaic um, but I think one of the things that we are is a holding place for the radiant kernel of the energies that need to come through um, and the the new work the goodwill and the will to good um, and the new thought forms of goodwill and the will to good held in purity um, and and we've spoken about and the other the other um, part of the equation is the distribution of those energies and beautifully summarized in the the um, tilted chalice pouring forth those higher energies to humanity and as the energies go forward um, there is a um, slowing of the rush of the flow of the energies and there's a um, diverging of the streams to different places and there's necessarily a, a kind of um, weakening of that energy as it goes forward which is part of part of the process um, as those energies go out to humanity in in different layers um, different stratas they're held with different consciousnesses of the people who hold them and so the role of um, groups like this is to hold the purity of those um, radiant energies um, in their strength so that they can continue to do their work as they go out to keep to keep the strength and the purity of those energies um, strong and um, you know that this idea of um, being within the body of humanity um, as sparks and and like a like a special gland or something in the body of humanity that has a, a role to to hold that light and receive that light and the third thing is um, just about the time frames that um, dot has mentioned and that were mentioned on the last day in the um, webinar about the sustainable development goals as well that it there's such a strong feeling of a returning of an opportunity as we come into the 2025 conclave and um and an opportunity that wasn't fully fulfilled previously in that time um, between the wars um, or by the by the by humanity at large and necessarily by the in saying that by the esoteric um, portion of humanity so there's a very strong sense of the responsibility of the time to um, 
do this work that we're doing and try to utilize all the energies available to us and stretch ourselves so that we can meet the opportunity um, fully in this moment. Thank you, Rebecca. Stefano, if you would like to share anything, please unmute yourself. Stefano, it shows that your uh, microphone is unmuted, but we cannot hear you yet. There might be something with the microphone that you're using. Maybe you can try to unplug the, the microphone, the headset that you're using. Hear you, Stefano. So, if you can maybe try to reconnect, sometimes that helps. Uh, so, if you leave the webinar and reconnect again, and uh, anyone in the inner circle would like to add anything, uh, or share on the any resonant impressions that been put in the circle, please. Meet yourself and step in. I'd like to um, maybe just um, reinforce what's been said here with with what Christine said and Rebecca. Actually, almost everybody, I think. Um, but coming in from the angle of um, um, we've all shared this incredibly powerful time, which I agree with um, Christine. It's just it's just rolling on, um, and it's like so we move into the year 2020 and beyond. And um, I just want to sort of sit in some form of remembrance of the power of coming together in like things like these webinars um partaking in the in the new moon meditations and and whatever else individuals and groups are connected to that in the very act of partaking whether one is um, a vocalizer in anything or sitting in the silence partaking, that that really is um, strengthening the light network. Um, and it does have a donatory function to it. I think it's so easy. Sometimes we get lost in, in the world of busyness and the, um, the mayor of world news and current affairs and things like that and sometimes that can make us feel as an individual a little bit impotent but when we come together in silence and we join and now we have these strengthenings of international networks that really does donate energy your time and effort by being present um, to 
the uh, revelation of, of the greater light. So I, I think that's very important because it can get covered up sometimes in, in the busyness of, 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 of affairs. Um, and I think the, the other thing is, like uh, what Christine said, it's, it's that deep inner listening. That, that silence, which is, is a theme that's really coming out, that action of silence. Um, such a powerful thing. And uh, not to lose the subtleties of that power, that the silence is a spiritual practice that happens within our own life, and we can come together and share it in um, group activity as well. Thank you. This is Dot. I'd like to respond also regarding silence and Richard, as you just shared, and Chris and so many, and Martin returning to your question about whether or not the this group and others around the planet who hold uh, the more subjective focus so intentionally uh, make or made a difference. Um, and in a way, you're right, that doesn't matter, but in another way, as Richard just said, we know that it does, and, the, and this subjective power that we are aware of, our united intention, certainly with the Global Silent Minute, being held in that chalice that was created by silence on either side of it, was incredible. And what has landed, if we draw the thread through just briefly, so many are sharing with us now that they are using silent minutes to open their meetings, to calm their children, to from the uh, A to Z, a silent minute is being used. And we have been invited, as Christine shared, by groups around the world now to open, to close, in fact, with, with a global silent minute. In fact, we'll be part of the Martin Luther King junior birthday celebration this Wednesday and invite all of you on here to subjectively join us at 12 noon and again at four o'clock as we uh, live go live with a global silent minute once again and Oprah uh, has shared that she will be using a silent minute on her tour at every stop on her upcoming tour uh, which is about health and well-being and John Legend and his nephew uh, and there are so many uh, who are talking uh, now with all of us about the practical application of silence as action so I think it's a resounding yes to that question and may we continue as Richard is uh, more than intimating and encouraging to come together both through these webinars and actual uh, gatherings like this and subjectively daily at 9 p.m. GMT ongoing and through silence period And it's Rebecca again. I just wanted to also, what's um, coming home for me is just this, um, what Chris brought out, this um, link between silence and listening. And it's almost like they're the same thing. And it's through our listening, it's really invocation and, and um, evocation <laughs> um, and distribution through our listening we can discern and really hear through our silent listening 
where others, where, you know, people who we might be meeting in daily life, but also um, humanity at large, where, where their need is and what's really going on. And then also to hear the, the um, energy or messages or to hear above us as well, so that we're hearing in all directions through listening through silence. Um, and I also just wanted to say that this beautiful image that's on the screen, um, someone was asking after festival week where it, who, where it had come from and whether there's any copyright on it. And I just wanted to let everyone know that if you Google autumn sky art, you will find um, the artist website who created this beautiful image that says so much about um, what's happening. Thank you, Rebecca. And um, we have Stefana on the phone here. Uh, and so I invite Stefana to share. And hello, Stefana. Yes, yes, okay, I'm here. Uh, hello, everybody, sorry for the connection and the trouble. Um, I am Stefano, Community of Living Ethics from Italy, and I'd like to share that what is uh, really still very present in me is the impact of a silent meditation proposed during our initiative. I I have to say that all the groups I've been in contact in the past and who I have involved again during the festival week have shared the depth of the call, which is still producing a deep resonance as ever before. Uh, I've seen that many groups were not answering when I, I was asking to make, for example, a network and was a, a very strong, very strong answer, really. And I want to share this because it was the first time I was having this kind of relation with people, with different groups. And uh, today was uh, coming to me from Agnioga, Heart 68, these words, intense silence presuppon greed accumulation of food and ben benevolent desires. Those the heart intent in silence, charged with energy like a dynamo, beats the ribbon of the universe. In this way, we collaborate with distant world. Okay, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Alex, for going through. Thank you, Stefano. Bye. I invite us now to go into the moment of silence and uh, invite the outer circle to join our sharing. And uh, please unmute your, uh, please raise your hand that we could unmute you. And we will continue with our sharing. But now just a moment of silence. Alexander, before we move into that moment of silence, can I just offer yes. one more thing? Um, yes, yes, please. One of, the, one of the things that's been really present and certainly through the um, Global Silent Minute Facebook page, you know, we received a request for a healing meditation um, for Australia and um, it just really is very symbolic of the power of silence as healing as well. And for me, I think um, it is that, it's that really um, important connection that needs to be made that when we are able to still ourselves and be present fully present with another we we are allowing those forces of light and love to flow through us and to touch 
others in a way that they can access that wholeness within themselves. And so, you know, I, I think a lot about that, particularly with the work that I do in community where, you know, um, I'm dealing with people who are suffering all kinds of conflict and trauma and um, that with all of the interventions that we have at our disposal, the most powerful thing that we can do is be present um, and be still and um, witness each other. Uh, and so, yeah, I just wanted to offer that as a another kind of aspect of the power of that um, still silent place that we're seeking. Thank you, Chris. And uh, logistical note that um, the originally announced time of this webinar, hour and a half, we suggested to extend to a lot more sharing coming from this circle. So uh, if you will need to leave at the uh, time that originally been announced, thank you for being together. And if you can stay longer to hear more and to gather and meditate at the end and sound a great invocation, we'll be really grateful. So let's now have a moment of silence and then we open the floor for the sharing in the widest circle. So please raise your hand if you would like to contribute. Oh, Jeffrey, you unmuted. Oh, yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you so much to all who've uh, helped put this uh, together. I see this um, this moment as a fulcrum or a pivot point in the change of ages between Pisces and the age of Aquarius. It's a fulcrum over which the energies are feel like they're changing or a quickening, like a like the uh, special energies have come in to the group and uh, inspired and um, encouraged uh, us as individuals and us as groups and the greater world. Um, from the solstice full moon back in uh, 2018 to the silent minute to the festival week and through the festival week to today's alignment, the sun, Saturn, Pluto, Mercury, Ceres, 
and Charclo all together and all the various alignments that are coming up in 2020 to culminate in a in the conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn at the first degree of Aquarius in uh, at the uh, at the solstice at the winter solstice in December coming up it just feels like it's a very auspicious time where each of us can really focus and do our best to connect to work on our own stuff and to work as groups um and uh I think the the initiative 2025 is, and that is very helpful in that regard. So, uh, thank you to all. Thank you, Jeffrey. Hello, Frida. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, well, I'd like to say thank you to everyone as well. Uh, I found this whole festival week to be truly amazing from start to finish, uh, including now uh, into the full moon of um, Capricorn that we've just been through. Um, I really feel that the silent minute, as many people have said, was absolutely key to the success of this endeavor. Um, beyond just us as a esoteric um, members of the new group of world servers, I felt it really uh, provided both a linking and also an energizing of the new group of world servers. And it was more or less a kind of an anointing, a blessing, maybe it was a small initiation for this group, but it really helped to um, energize the group and orient it towards the next seven years of service. So kudos to everyone who helped to uh, to organize and disseminate uh, the information of the silent minute. The other observation I have from, from doing this um, festival week was that um, it really gave us an opportunity to reflect on perhaps our service uh, over the next seven years. And uh, having helped to organize a couple of the webinars I really feel this, uh, what someone else had said, this idea that this connection uh, of groups is very, very um, strong and that if we can um, do the right planning, the right organization to move us forward, um, um, picking up perhaps on what Michael and Tulia Robbins had put forward, this idea of the esoteric United Nations, I think we have the potential to really uh, set a great firm footing uh, for the uh, new civilization. So, you know, I, I feel very blessed to have been part of this as a participant and uh, as a small part on the organizing side. And I'm really looking forward to the next seven years. So thank you everyone. Thank you, Frida. And uh, uh, Tuya, you are muted on your end. And while you're unmuting yourself, I was just thinking to ask you if you could uh, reiterate on the idea of Esoteric United Nations that Frida just mentioned. So I'm not sure if everyone heard this in a call to join this. Hello? <laughs> Yes, hello to everybody and thank you for everyone and it is so uh, uplifting always to listen every one of you. Uh, so this shows how important it is to come to the sacred circle and share. Um, it's just wonderful to hear. Actually, I was thinking one could even record this and and put in one's mobile or somewhere and listen that while one is driving again and again because it is so strengthening. And a um, few th uh, thoughts what came after this uh, talking astrologically, what kinds of moment we are living. Just a little short um, impact for that, that uh, the uh, work of the soul the incarnated soul, which we call Hercules, in labors of Capricorn, he has to descend to the hell 
to these hill uh, plateaus, um, really underworlds. So Capricorn has this ability. So it's like that when we think about the whole arc from Aries to Capricorn, it takes so long time for the incarnated soul to gain real powers and calm and strength that he can descend into those realms and really um, release um, how it is in the story of Prometheus, which is uh, like an aspect of a solar angel. So those who came here to help humanity to rise um, uh, have bound themselves into the matter. And it is a great suffering for them. It is one um, expression which is said the great sac sacrifice. Uh, Sanat Kumara is called also a great sacrifice, but also the so solar angels are called great sacrifice because they bind themselves for millions of years in order to uplift. So this that we have realized in silence, the power of the group. So it has come for me all the time more and more clear or or the feeling sense of that, that how powerful the group is and can be. And in silence, we come so close together to release the soul aspects of the individual in the group, in the nations. And that relates to this um, thought what um, uh, Alexander was asking about the uh, esoteric United Nations. We actually are um, tonight writing a letter and we send it forth. It, we have just been too busy to and find and trying to find the place now. And this is perfect time for it when we have Saturn Pluto conjunction because it is telling about these energies of death, uh, which are at the same time the energies of the upliftment and release, redeeming energies. When we are able to go into the underworld and really release those uh, earthbound souls, the lives which are bound to these who cannot move forward, but the redeeming force has to come which are we, or we have to be related to those forces which are all the time ready there if we do our part. So we will send now the letter, uh, hopefully tonight, and uh, everyone is um, welcome, but we have uh, one aspect of this work that uh, we are going to take oaths. Um, in that sense that this work is for the next seven years so um, only no there is no no way out if you take a pledge <laughs> but every then there is a possibility of, of course to bow, um, relate loosely lo loser ways but there has to be people who really commit themselves now to the invocation of the souls of the nations so we welcome everybody and we will let you know more and if there is some particular questions that anybody would like to ask i think the best way would be to send a letter via email to michael and me i think um, this forum is more of the sharing of the festival week but thank you thank you so much for everybody Thank you, Tuya. I feel very resonant with the idea of the esoteric United Nations. In a way, we, as a world service, we are called and destined to come on behalf of our nations, our communities, and to form, if we can call of the United Nations 3.0, the new iteration of this great idea of bringing nations together. And this new United Nations really would become United Nations of people, 
not just United Nations of the governments. And by invoking the souls of our nations and coming together in functional unity, what Rebecca was talking about earlier, that could create that, give the birth for that new, really functional organism of the United Nations that I think many of us sense the need and the approach to manifestation. Thank you, Shasha. If I just, one little idea in relationship to this, uh, what makes the power is that the only one is needed. And that one, what was needed then 2000 years ago, to what everything what we have now is linked to, was the Christ that he was able to stand the way that the will of God was implemented into humanity. But he was the first one and only the one. So that's why it means that whomever in their own place, in their own group or in their nation, only one is needed to make the change. Um, yes, um, Sasha, do you hear me? Yes, Michael, we can hear you. Just very briefly, uh, Tuya and I have been working on this now for about five years. And uh, she has put in tremendous work uh, in studying these nations. We've done, when we say done, okay. We've focused on about 100 nations so far. And I was amazed at how much I just didn't know about these nations, about their energies, about their connections, their importance, their next steps ahead, their problems. Um, I think if we're going to evoke the soul of nations who, let's say, are at that stage when it can be evoked, then we have to study the various nations of the world uh, as Tuya has been doing and as we will supply. Tomorrow we'll have a discussion on this and I sent to you, uh, Sasha, uh, a webinar link and uh, you can send it out to whomever you like. Um, and then we'll uh, explain a little more uh, what we have in mind here and how to go about it, but it will require a uh, real commitment from everybody, even if it's just five minutes a day. Okay, thank you, Sasha. And thank you everybody for your uh, contributions these last two nights and all during the festival week. Lots of appreciation, lots of love. Thank you, Michael. Michael Linfield uh, ha had to leave. Uh, he has another meeting to attend, but he wanted to uh, share. Uh, and so he wrote a message. So I will read the message. Um, Daniela, for some reason, I cannot copy paste it from question section to chat section that everyone could see it. If you could please help with that. Uh, meanwhile, I will read. I cannot copy either. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so then. Um, I'm reading. Greetings. I need to leave the call now and simply want to express my deep gratitude for how we are showing up together as the planetary server. I believe that as a group we have developed a greater capacity to stand in this in the silence and through this portal to enter into closer cooperation with the hierarchy and to be infused to a greater degree by the power of Shambhala. Our task is to normalize these relationships so that communion and cooperation with hierarchy and Shambhala becomes the new normal 
as the planetary server takes its place inside the planetary life. Namaskar. Thank you, Michael. And for ongoing presence in this circle and for holding this high note of alignment. If anyone uh, in the circle would like to share, please raise your hands and we will uh, unmute you. There is a sharing from Jeannie. Uh, Jeannie, maybe you would like to voice it. So if that is the case, please unmute your, uh, raise your hand and we will unmute you. If not, then I will just read it. And meanwhile, I think I figured the way how to repost the sharings. So I will now post what Michael shared. And so Ginny wrote, about 2003, I was in a spiritual program in New Mexico, and the teacher took us to a sacred spot, and there was a door standing alone in a frame in the wilderness, and I was invited to step inside the door. And when I did, I found myself immersed in a field of radiant light within a circle of spiritual diplomats. And it was so overwhelming. I began to cry and stepped out. I told the teacher that I walked into an active spiritual United Nations. And the teacher said, yes, you are right. Thank you, Jimmy. When later today uh, I will receive the information from Michael and Tuya, I will forward to everyone on this call that information. Betty asked a question, uh, where are the introductions at the silent daily meditations recorded? especially the first on synthesis was amazing, but also all the others were so inspiring as entrance to the silent meditations. If they were recorded, would it be possible to get a, a link for those? Uh, Daniela, maybe you can answer this. Indeed, they were, they were recorded. <clears throat> and um, yes, we will post them on our website, if that's okay. Alexander. And absolutely, and a big gratitude to Daniela for being an angel, technical angel, who were posting all the recordings of all the webinars throughout this week and before, and for all the support. And I believe those recordings are now available on our YouTube channel, right? Yes, yes, they are all, yeah. And it is with joy, all of this. Thank you. And if anyone wants to add any final sharings, please do so. Uh, anyone in the, among our panelists in the inner circle or anyone in the wider circle, please.
And Risa wrote, for those of us who may be silent, we stand in gratitude for all the work everyone has done here, joining us all together. Risa. And as we prepare to close our work today, I uh, and as we will go into silence, before we go into silence, I want to invite our panelists to sound the great invocation together after the moment of silence. Uh, I suggest you have three minutes of silence and then to have the silent, um, sorry, and then to have the great invocation. And I would invite, uh, if that's okay, if I, I, I can please confirm, uh, if that would sound the first stanza of the Great Invocation. Richard would sound the second stanza of the Great Invocation. Elisabetta, the third stanza. Martin, the fourth. And Chris, the final statement. Please confirm if that is okay with you. Sure. With great joy. Very well. Yep, that's fine. It's okay. Do you want to, for us to say it in our language or in English? Huh, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was not prepared for this. Um, <laughs> let's do it in English, just okay. as a synthetic language. Okay. So, uh, that <laughs> first, Richard second, Elizabeth third, Martin fourth, and the final. Uh, so now we will have the um, and Tuya, are you now uh, in the temple? I You're... can go there. I can go there. Yes, I run there. <laughs> so if you, <laughs> yeah, if you could um, open this meditation, three minutes of silent meditation with the sound of the gong from the Temple of Silence in Finland, and then sounding the, the same gong for ending of the silence. And then we would go into the Great Invocation. And then instead of three OM, we would have three strikes of the gong. Well, I will do that. So can you me, uh, mute me? I don't find that my mobile. Okay, so I will then track the time for the meditation and I will unmute you for uh, in three minutes. To you, please unmute yourself. There was a glitch in the system, so we lost you for a moment.
from the point of light within the mind of God. Let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God. Let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men. The purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out and may seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Thanks to everyone for joining today. We continue our work together. Close to my enlightened support now. And yet I turn my back to that light and serve my fellow men. Yeah, Aquarian brothers and sisters, 
Thank you for joining today and we invite you to join our next webinar of the 2025 initiative, continuing the work following the cycle of the new moons on January 26th. Please join. You know why it says Sagittarius, Aquarius, new moon, um, working with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, mm. empowering the thought forms of solutions behind each goal. This time in the cycle of Aquarius, we will work with the goal 10, reduced inequalities. Thank you very much. Thank you.